everyone, it's Jeannie here and today I have a special guest with me and this is Coco and today we are going to discuss all things French Bulldog and I wanted to, I guess, share my whole experience with you guys because if you haven't noticed from the thumbnails, um, a lot of people can be quite vocal with their opinions and also give Frenchies a bad rep. Um, so I kind of want to just discuss that and if you're thinking about getting a French Bulldog or just getting a first dog in general, just keep on watching. Now, do apologize if you hear some weird noises, grunting or growling. Coco's a little excited doing this video, so you can't really sit still at the moment. Um, but yeah, to be honest, I never thought in a million years I would own a dog. I, it's not that I hated them, I think it was just more growing up. I never really had the exposure around pet animals, like pet dogs. So for me, I guess the mentality growing up was that they're gross, they're dirty, um, they're messy and they slobber everywhere. But it wasn't until I think about high school when most of my friends had pet dogs that I would always kind of keep a distance or stay away. But I did slowly feel more comfortable around them, um, apart from when they came up to lick me because it was was still gross um, but yeah moving forward fast forward a few years later when I started getting depression and I was just researching ways in you know try to keep an open mind and trying to be happy and I read a lot of articles saying that people with pet animals like pet dogs they're um, more likely to be a happier person so I guess that's where it all began now technically Frenchies are not designer dogs because designer dogs are crossbreeds um, however they are labelled as designer because of their price tag I'm not gonna lie Frenchies do cost a lot of money and that's just to buy on average in Australia they cost around four to five thousand um, so if you know it's definitely a game changer if you're thinking of buying one make sure you do a lot of research and even you know just people in general are just shocked about the amount like I'm not going to mention how much we paid because I we've also had our experience, first experience of um, you know just people being really gobsmacked about the price. I remember I remember once we were at the shops, we took him along with us, and Cal was waiting with him outside while I went in to get a few things. And a mum came past with her kids, and the kids were like, "Oh, he's so cute!" You know, mum, can we get one for Christmas? And then the mum asked, you know, Cal, how much we paid for him, and when like we're pretty much open people, so we told her, and then. Her expression pretty much changed straight away. She was like, no, let's go. And that was it. And even family members, like, that we used to, when they asked, we used to tell, they were surprised as well. And it kind of made us feel like we should be ashamed or guilty for spending that much on a pet. Um, so that's the reason why we don't really mention how much exactly that we paid anymore um, but like I said they do cost quite a lot and one of the main reasons why they do cost a lot is because they are very hard to breathe naturally um, because of their narrow hips and short bodies um, it's really hard for them to breathe naturally which means that they need to be artificially inseminated and also have constant care looking after the mum and pups. So since Frenchies cost a lot of money, it also attracts a lot of debate over puppy farmers. And when I did my research, I read a lot of comments about, you know, a lot of breeders being puppy farmers because they charge so much. And even one of my girlfriends made a comment along those lines. And it kind of got me really annoyed because I know that there's a lot of passionate people out there with against animals. But seriously, it's like you really need to get your facts straight before you make assumptions. Honestly, if you are a breeder, regardless of whether you do it for show dolls or whatever, at the end of the day, you are doing it for the money. But it doesn't necessarily make you a bad person. French Bulldogs have gone up in price um, through recent years. And to be honest, it's like everything else. Like, you know, petrol, grocery, housing, everything goes up in years because, you know, especially for, for, for French Bulldogs, because they are still in high demand. People still want to purchase them. And for me, I think my opinion is that puppy farming means breeding in an unsafe environment where the mothers are you know forced to produce litters more than twice or a couple of times constantly and also being locked up in small cages without you know freely being able to move and looked after as well and when I did my when I researched trying to find the best breeder for me um, I did a lot of research online and I did notice there were some breeders is selling them a lot cheaper however they do make you question um, whether they were proper breeders or not 
So when I decided I wanted a dog, a lot of my friends told me that I should adopt. And to be honest, I probably would have adopted if I was looking for a pet. I did think about it. I thought about it a lot because, I don't know, I kind of felt guilty that I was buying off a breeder, like I was supporting breeders, and I felt like a bad person because that was the feeling that I was getting from the look from their faces. But to be honest, I, like I said, I wasn't buying because I wanted a pet. I wanted a dog because I wanted a companion someone to be there with me to help me get through my depression and also fit into my lifestyle as well. I've always liked bulldogs, like British bulldogs and French bulldogs. I think they're super cute. And once on Instagram, I saw a photo of this dog in mid-air. It's like a side profile and he had the cutest little button, but I didn't know which breed it was. And it wasn't still, it wasn't until I started researching that I realized it was a French bulldog. And the more I looked into it, the more, I guess, similarities and traits really fitted well with me. So not only are Frenchies really loyal companions, they are also very small. They can easily become overweight, so you got to watch what they eat. And they have a really pinched nose, which means they have a lot of breathing problems, which means they often snore. And they don't need a lot of exercise as well because they get really hot really easily, over hot or really cold. And pretty much it exactly describes me if I was a dog. So what I liked about it, the Frenchies is, one, it's like... I don't have to change much of my lifestyle because they don't need a lot of space as well. And I wanted something that was mine, that looked at me and wanted me, like I was their world. And usually when I'm really determined in something, then I'll usually go for it. So that was why I decided that I wanted a French Bulldog. So at first I did a lot of research just to make sure I was 100% committed and ready um, in, pet, in getting a dog and also making sure that, that you know, he fit into my lifestyle as well. And it probably wasn't till the past year or so that I actually seriously started looking for a breeder. And looking for a breeder was seriously a really frustrating experience. Like I spoke to a lot of people, like I have some friends that have Frenchies, so I asked them a lot of questions, went to a lot of play dates, and even strangers on the street, I would just stop and ask them questions. And also joined a lot of like Facebook pages for local breeders as well. And it was just really hard because even like speaking to some breeders over the phone or just online, they took a while to get back to me and the answers they were giving me weren't really straightforward. Like they seemed very vague and it was just really confusing and even like I went to some of like the French Bulldog Club shows as well because there's one in each state and they were seriously like another experience altogether. It's like they thought like the I'm pretty sure like I'm sure they're nice people and passionate but the vibe I got from them were like they felt like they were really superior and you know compared to other breeders and the amount of times they'll bitch about other people it was just crazy and it felt like you know when you go to a country country club like you have to try to suck up to them for them to select you because they're I don't know what their process was in you know purchasing them so it was a really like intimidating experience so I finally found a breeder who I contacted and spoke to and she was so nice. Like she gave me a lot of details, even information that I didn't even know I needed to know. So that was really cool and that was when I decided, like when we decided that she was the person that we were going to go with. So after a long process, which I almost gave up, we finally found a breeder and she was in Victoria as well. So I wanted one that was in the same state so we could go and visit. And she was super nice. Like I said, she even told us stuff that I didn't even know of. She was very open and friendly and her facilities was amazing. And I really grew fond of her and I thought, you know, she was definitely a breeder that I could trust. So, which is why we ended up going with her. And to be honest, like she did get a lot of back, like I saw a lot of backlash online and people were just leaving nasty comments about her, which kind of hit a nerve to me because I have met her and seen how she breeds and how nice of a person she was but people like there's a lot of keyboard warriors that were leaving really nasty comments like you know how could she you know charge so much or why won't she give the prices or location online why does she want people to call her and i'm thinking you know first of all i hate keyboard warriors in general because 
even a lot of these people that were commenting admitted that they've never seen her or spoken to her. This is what they've just seen online. And it's just wrong. Like, how can you do that to someone? Like, I feel like I need to defend her or say something because, you know, you don't make assumptions, especially, like, you know, if it's against someone. It's just like cyberbullying. You know, being a breeder is not just about selling puppies. It's also about taking good care and looking after them as well once they come out. Not just the puppies, but the mother as well. When puppies come out, they need to be fed constantly every two hours. And if you have a litter of about four or five pups, and once you're done feeding each pup, it pretty much rotates to a next round of feed anyway. So you don't have time to answer a lot of inquiries. Like, why can't she, like people say, why can't you, she just put the prices or locations up online? Well, maybe people shouldn't be lazy. If you are really interested in getting a French Bulldog, call and ask the questions. Make sure that, you know, you ask the right questions, not just be lazy and just buy it from whatever they say online. So I understand if she doesn't want to put her prices or, you know, her location up because she only wants people that are seriously interested not wasting her time wanting to inquire about dogs and also location as well Frenchies are not cheap they cost thousands and you know for her own security as well you don't want to put address like you know you won't put your own address up on the internet for everyone to see why will she put her address up so everyone knows her location where people can easily go and like steal the puppies or something like that I don't know I just feel like I need to defend her because I have seen the facility and it's so nice and clean and organized and you know that's what you're looking for when you are looking for a breeder and you also want a breeder you can trust as well but trust is not just with the breeder it's also the breeder needs to trust you in something you know they've taken a long time nurturing and taking care of these puppies they want to make sure that they are also giving it to the right person so if you are looking at getting a dog, um, especially French Bulldogs, I do strongly recommend doing a thorough research just to make sure that they're best suited to you because French Bulldogs, they are companion dogs, which means they make really good company, they're loyal, but at the same time, they also need constant attention and a lot of love as well. So if you have a full-time full job when you're not always home or you're traveling a lot, then getting a French Bulldog is probably not the best um, breed for you because, you know, they do get loyal only they also do get depressed as well so that is that being said um, if you're not home a lot then maybe it's not the best but if you are and you know they are also great around small children as well because they're really friendly I mean they play by it but they're not too aggressive they're definitely not guard dogs so if you're looking at a guard dog to guard the house or anything like that they're probably not the best breed for that um, but yeah and they don't really need a lot of space as well so if you have a small apartment they're really good in a small backyard as well they're really good they don't need a lot of exercise so you know if you're someone that's active and go out a lot um, don't expect to take them out with you because they'll probably last 15 minutes before they give up and also financially, they do cost a lot of money, not just purchasing them, but also looking after them as well. Um, French Bulldogs have known um, breathing problems because of their flat nose, which means sometimes, you know, you may need to open up their airwaves just to breathe. They also have um, spine problems because of their narrow hips and um, knee problems as well. So. If you don't look after them properly or give them a lot of care, then there may be possibilities of operations or surgery further down the track. That do cost a lot. So also look into um, pet insurance as well or some sort of, I guess, money on the side, making sure that you can afford all those for them as well. So when buying a Frenchie, there are a few things I recommend asking the breeder. For example, for their vaccination details, like um, all their vaccination, their medical information, if they have any scorings from the vet, for example, like their spinal cords or any medical details, if they're allergic to anything. 
um, you know, also recommend before buying, visiting them, visiting the mother as well as the pup as well. And also anything that will prevent any future health problems. And also microchip information. Um, a lot of breeders will do that for you, provide the microchip, get it registered, but make sure you follow up and you get all those details. And any certificates of like sterilization, getting the desex or when they should get desex, ask that information as well. So I'm not sure about other countries, but in Australia, you also need to register your dog with the local council. Um, so before you buy, it's probably best asking them whether your breed is allowed in the council because I know certain breeds aren't um, and also they will need information to do with like microchip and things like that as well so make sure you ask that before you purchase just in case and also booking to see a vet as well after you bring the puppy home take them to the vet um, and ask them questions so, so when we got Coco we asked a lot of questions like seriously like some may have sounded so stupid but we just may have wanted to make sure that we were well prepared so we asked a lot of questions like you know when to wash him when to feed him what to feed him um, you know what information like what he needs like any flea tablets tablets, worm tablets, vaccinations, things like that. And seriously, it's like having a baby. I am obsessed with his poop. Like I would always like after he's done a poop, make sure that it's right consistent. And I'll be on Google like all the time, like anytime something's wrong or something's happened, just to make sure that it's fine. And the good thing is like I also still keep in touch with the breeder. She's contacted us a few times just to follow up and I've also contacted her as well, which is really helpful because they grow up so fast. So after we bought Coco home, it was definitely a difficult first couple of weeks, just adjusting, having him around, because like I said, we've never had a dog before, and it has been a real learning curve, and we've kind of worked out a routine now, which is getting there a lot better, and we've had him for over two months now, and he'll be five this week, five months this week, so... I honestly can't remember life without him. Like he has definitely changed our lives. Like even when we're at work or we're not with him, we're always thinking about him. And you know, sometimes we have our good days where he's really good. You know, he doesn't make a mess and he, you know, he's very obedient. And then we have days where he's just a little terror and just won't sit down and do anything. But he is slowly getting better. And you know, we take him to puppy school. He loves to socialize, but he's very stubborn, especially when it comes to obedience training. But he is, he is slowly getting there. And he is really smart as well. Like sometimes, like we'll, he'll follow us around the house, but then once we go near his playpen, he'll step back a bit just with caution, just because he doesn't want to go in yet. Um, but yeah, so I love having him around. And honestly, like he has been a really good distraction a lot of times. I do feel like I'm a lot happier because, you know, I just think about him all day, every day, even after he is like just pooped everywhere. But like I still love him and he just kind of gives me more of a reason to wake up in the morning. So anyways, that is the end of this video. Hello. He's a little bit tired right now because he spent the time running around on the couch. Um, but I hope you found this video interesting and helpful. Um, if you do, please give me a thumbs up. And also make sure you subscribe so you can see more of us. Go, go. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Bye.